All right, so very quickly, I forgot to uh, mention something on the last walk around. Many people asked, uh, what are these things? What are these two levers with golf balls? This is called the vernier accretion meter. It's a way we have to measure how much ice is building up on the airframe. Uh, we're limited to uh, 60 milliliter, millimeters only, and this thing can pick up 20 millimeters at a time. What happens is the person sitting in that seat looks down, lines up two lines, and, um, and that way, using kind of the vernier method, can see how much ice built up. You can't just use a regular ruler because ice sort of builds on the ruler and then how can you see the, the, the measurements? How can you see the, uh, the increments? So what I'm gonna do is simulate that we have a bit of ice on there. Uh, just bear with me. Okay, so what I did is I just put a piece of masking tape on there. And as you can see, it's sticking out maybe, uh, I don't know, eight, nine mils past the leading edge. And that's how ice would form in flight is it would just kind of build up uh, in excess on the leading edge and we're going to jump inside to that seat and see what it looks like and see if we can precisely measure how much that masking tape sticks out. Okay, so we're in the left seat and let's go take a look. So what we're going to do is line up these two white lines. So not like that, but just like that. And then we're going to look and see where that ice uh, meets the edge there. All right, so here we are at the nose of the helicopter and a lot of people have asked what this thing is. This is a camera. Uh, it's got a light and the actual camera. What it does is it measures um, or reads how the blades are flying or spinning around. We use this in conjunction with a, several accelerometers that are planted all over the aircraft to do the track and balance of the helicopter. So anytime a, uh, a blade is changed or a pitch link or something else that may just upset the fine balance of the helicopter, uh, we do a, a RADS flight. A uh, RAD stands for Rotor Advanced Diagnostic uh, System. I think, um, just to measure how each blade is flying. And then from there, this camera, along with all the uh, accelerometers, spits out some data to change the balancing weights and just do some minute adjustments to the pitch links to ensure that all the blades are flying the exact same plane as they should be and we get a smooth, smooth aircraft. Me again. <laughs> Anyways, we're inside the Cormorant. Uh, one of the questions asked was, what is this stuff, this gray stuff here? This is just nothing more than insulation for both sound and heat. And in behind it is the outside skin. There's nothing in there. And then you've got the different little stringers and bulkheads and whatnot. Uh, this is a fuel pipe. This is some sort of an electrical device. I have no idea what it is. And lots of wiring. The whole aircraft is like that. That's it, that's all there is to it. Just lots and lots of wires, pipes, and little devices. That's kind of the structural components there. And this is what kind of the roof looks like. This uh, number two engine will be just above here somewhere. Um, but again, nothing but wires, so many wires. Wires, 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 everywhere there's wires. And little black boxes there. Okay, back in the cockpit, someone just uh, messaged me or left a comment asking a question about the heating of the Cormorant uh, or the cabin heating, I guess you could say. So right up there, uh, let's see if I can do this, is our temperature control. Uh, we got a crew fan, yoink. So that just blows air in and out. This is the master, whether we go norm, which is kind of like heat or cold, which is the air conditioner. And this is like the recirculation you have in your car. So you can go like, recirc or outside air or just leave it in auto uh, so it decides for you. Same thing as a car, it either sucks air from the outside or sucks air from the inside. And this is how we just control the temperature. You go either cold or hot. Um, yeah, and then all the air comes out of vents like here. There's one there, one there, and then the rest of the cabin has then there, 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 all the way down, all the way back up as well as these guys will blow air around. Um, these vents, 
uh, see if I can find you a good one, are completely adjustable. They're kind of cool. They're like on the old 70s style airplanes. Uh, the punker louvers is what they're called. And so there it's uh, open and you just rotate it uh, like that and it's now it's closed. So you can individually control where the air is flowing. All right, so we're uh, kind of underneath the Cormorant right now, and we're gonna talk about how the air conditioning and the heating system works a little better, a little more. Um, turbine engines work by compressing air and then burning it and then using a turbine to power the aircraft. Um, when you compress air, a property of physics is that it heats up. Um, a lot of aircraft, airliners, all use some of that air called bleed air. They just take a bit of that air off the compressor section to power systems. The Cormorant just uses compressed, that compressed air, or that bleed air, to power two systems. The ice detector unit, which is on the top of the aircraft, we talked about it, detects uh, liquid water content in the air, helps for anti-icing systems. And the other thing is our pneumatic air conditioner, or PAC, or air conditioning pack, whatever you want to call it, as well as the heater. So, when you take engine or air from that engine, it comes in the form of being compressed and hot. Mix it with a bit of uh, ambient air, and you get warm air, you blast that into the cabin, that's how you heat the cabin. Cooling it, however, is a little different. Um, one of the properties of air, or uh, any gas, is you compress it, it gets hot, you expand it, it gets cold. So, it kind of works like an air conditioner, but it doesn't. It uses air as a refrigerant, but the, the air won't undergo a phase change like you would with your normal air conditioning refrigerants. So, you're taking bleed air from the engine, it gets fed into the pneumatic, uh, into that air conditioning pack, that ECS pack, environmental control system pack. The first thing you do is you take that hot compressed air and you put it into uh, a, an air exchanger or heat exchanger and you cool it to basically ambient temperature. And that's what that big intake uh, right there, somewhere there does is it just takes ambient air and blasts it over uh, the heat exchanger to cool that compressed air. So now you're left with compressed air that is ambient temperature. That compressed ambient air temperature gets fed into a compressor again, so it gets really, really compressed. Um, that really, really compressed air is now hot again. Remember, we compress air, it gets hot. You take that really, really compressed air that's hot and put it into another air exchanger, blast it with the ambient air, and you end up with really, really compressed air that is ambient temperature. That air, you then feed it into a turbine to A, uh, expand it, so it's an expanding turbine, and B, extract work from it, or energy. So what happens when it goes into that uh, expanding turbine is it gets colder, it gets a lot colder, about 20 to 30 degrees Celsius colder. One of the properties of air, or any fluid, is as it expands, it cools, right? Compresses, gets hot, expands, cools. So now you're left with uh, air that's 20 to 30 degrees less than ambient and is at basically atmospheric temperature. You that use that air and that goes into the cabin to cool it. That turbine it went through, the work you extracted from it is being used to um, power that, uh, that compressor we talked about where the air enters and gets recompressed. So it's kind of a cool system. It works solely off bleed air and it doesn't have any refrigerants like your, uh, your car or your house. And that's how we cool the Cormorant. A lot of aircraft work that way. The air will then undergo a, uh, an air dryer to remove some of the moisture. I'm not exactly sure how that one works. Um, but anyways, you end up with moderately dry air that's cool inside the cabin. It works. It's not the most amazing system. Sometimes on a really hot summer day, it lacks a bit of power, but it's more than enough. It's comfortable um, and it keeps us cool on those long missions. Another cool feature of the Cormorant is what's in the tail. So we're on the ramp, there's the tail. And if we just move back up, tear this down, we have a ladder. This is a, an extendable ladder, a uh, A-frame style, I guess you'd say. Uh, I'm not gonna take it out right now because it's kind of a two-person job. Um, but this allows us to do maintenance on the tail when we're on the road. This will reach all the way up there, should we need to. Very, very tippy top. Uh, not a fun time on a windy day, but it can. It's kind of a cool hidden feature, very handy. Oh, yeah, there's some more of the construction, uh, the aircraft. 
Uh, that's some hydraulic lines going down one side. Uh, I forget that's the number one or number two system. And then down the other side is the opposite uh, system. Um, yeah, that's it. And they run all the way to the tail. Uh, some wiring, instrumentation, and above that is the, uh, the drive shaft.